They're so cheap, but they are quicker. But which one's the best? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So, the Celeron. The Intel Celeron processor is dual core, but has no hyper-threading. It is also based on Intel's core architecture, and with decreased power consumption, the performance does take a hit. But then again, you have to bear in mind what these processors are designed for. Casual browsing of the web and word processing, yes. Entry-level gaming, not so much. Although not impossible. This processor is designed to let off minimal heat, leading to increased efficiency in entry-level laptops. And now the Core i3. It's safe to say that it is a lot faster than the Intel Celeron. On, but this isn't unexpected. It has reduced memory latency and its single and dual core performance is much better. But then again, power consumption is up and this affects the battery life of laptops, so there are downsides. For the performance comparison, I'm going to be using the Intel Celeron N4000 and the Core i3-7130U. The Intel Celeron N4000 is a dual core processor and is designed for cheap laptops and me PCs. The N4000 is manufactured on a 14 nanometer process and runs at between 1.1 and 2.6 gigahertz. It also carries Intel UHD Graphics 600, which is clocked up to 600 150 megahertz. The 7100U is also a dual core processor and has both of these cores clocked to 2.7 gigahertz and has hyper threading to utilize up to four threads at once. The 7100U boasts Intel HD 620 graphics, which is clocked between 300 megahertz and 1000 megahertz. In Signebench R15 Multi 64 bit, the Celeron achieves an average of 133 points, whereas the i3 achieves an average of 284 points. In the single 64 bit version, the Celeron achieves an average of 70 points compared to 111 of the i3. In Signebench, R10 single core, the Celeron achieves 2,152 points compared to the i3's 4,338. But what is the Intel Celeron best and worst for? Well, it is inexpensive, so great for low-end systems like home media servers and laptops, where casual browsing of the web and word processing are really the most complex tasks you'd want to complete. If accompanied with an SSD, the Intel Celeron is definitely not as bad as it could be, with a more traditional HDD. But the Celeron is definitely not good for a fair few things. It's not good for modern devices that are expected to last a number of years to come. The Celeron on just isn't future proof for that. You should also avoid turning to it as a gaming solution. I know that it is possible, but it certainly isn't ideal. You'll just find yourself spending more money on upgrading your CPU down the road, so if you can, you might as well just spend that little bit more in the first place. You're better off purchasing the i3 or Ryzen 3 processor, or even an Intel Pentium Gold processor. They are a lot more future proof. Let's talk about the i3. The Intel Core i3 processors are a great solution for people who require more power than that's needed to do casual browsing of the web and word processing. They are great when accompanied with DDR4 RAM and an SSD, so prove great for modern and future-proof machines. They handle themselves well under load due to hyper-threading, and therefore can be an entry-level option in some gaming computers. But what can the processor not handle? Well, if you want to edit videos or photos in depth, it will show its weaknesses for sure. It will struggle in more modern FPS games, and most likely just slow you down. So in summary, overall, the Intel Core i3 comes out on top, because it is the more expensive chip. At the end of the day, if devices with i3 processors exceed your budget, the Celeron-based devices aren't the end of the world. Just make sure the devices have SSDs in them, otherwise they really will be slow. If all you want to do is browse the web and type up Word documents, get a Celeron, or even better a Pentium if you can afford it. But if you want more performance to play low load games and other higher load tasks, get an i3. That's about it for this video, I hope you did enjoy it, and with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.